Greetings. It's Ernie Kadat. I'm the author of Marketplace Simulations. And I'm here today to introduce you to um, using Marketplace in online classrooms. Uh, unfortunately, this is required now because of the coronavirus and people all over the country are all over the world are finding it necessary uh, to go to class online, to give class online uh, in order to stay safe. Um, we at Marketplace uh, pray for all of you and your family, your colleagues, um, friends uh, to stay safe. And uh, it's sad that uh, we are here because of that, the coronavirus, but I believe uh, we can make the best of it. Uh, all of us are concerned about it, but life must go on. Classes must be taught. Uh, students uh, need and want to go to class. So we're trying to help. And uh, so we've taken a look at doing Marketplace online and we will illustrate that for you today. Um, so that's the plan. We'll be introducing marketplace simulations and online delivery. Now we have a number of people who are participating that are new to marketplace. So we're going to give you uh, a little bit of background before we illustrate how it works. Uh, and I've enlisted the help of a number of people in that capacity. And uh, so this is like raising a uh, child, it takes a village and, and doing things really well takes a, a few people as well. Um, so I'd like to give you a few quick facts about Marketplace uh, just to get started. Um, we have simulations for, that will last for 20 minutes, we call them micro simulations. We have simulations that will last for a few hours, a few weeks or an entire semester. Um, we have simulations for undergraduates, uh, MBAs, uh, and executives, and for uh, core classes like introduction uh, to uh, marketing and accounting and, and so forth, uh, intro to business. But we also have a lot of in-depth simulations that cover all the disciplines, as you can see here. Students can play individually at their own pace, and when they do that, they are often competing against computer generated competitors, or they can compete against classmates, which is really the greatest amount of fun because you are um, trying to outsmart uh, perhaps your friends and colleagues uh, and uh, they're trying to outsmart you. And it's a really invigorating kind of environment. Um, now Marketplace, what's really great about it is, is that it will engage your students uh, in a way that's much greater than you could ever accomplish with lectures and, and other um, learning pedagogies. It's a, uh, <coughs> the students are doing the work and your job is to coach them, to help them uh, understand uh, important principles and how to apply them, to challenge them uh, if, if you choose to meet with them individually or in teams. Uh, and, and this is really experiential learning at its best. The students are working and learning and you're coaching. Uh, that's experiential learning. To tell you a little bit more about us, uh, uh, since we started in 2001, uh, uh, we've had uh, 880,000 uh, um, students and business professionals be trained with Marketplace. We're, we're actually, uh, as of now, over 900,000 and we'll be uh, uh, at a million, I believe in the next uh, 12 months. This map gives you an idea of uh, where our customers are. We're literally all over the world. Uh, so I'm sure uh, wherever you are, you can find yourself on this uh, bubble map and see uh, how many others are uh, using marketplace in your area. Um, uh, we have a number of important strategic partnerships uh, that 
uh, also attest to the quality of what we offer. Uh, Harvard Business Publishing now uh, carries Marketplace in its online catalog. Uh, they have several of our simulations. Uh, and uh, we are also partnering with Western Governors University. What's really important about them is that they're one of the largest online universities in the world uh, with um, tens of thousands of students uh, across many disciplines and even within the uh, uh, business school. Uh, I believe they have 20,000 students. And we have spent uh, several months with them uh, crafting a curriculum that's delivered entirely online with very little instructor involvement. Uh, the bulk of the work is done through Marketplace. Uh, and we've, with them, created an undergraduate core capstone. So this is after the first uh, two years of, of uh, uh, classroom work. They wanted something that would pull together all the core courses. And we also have worked with them on a capstone course for their MBA program. They're using our conscious capitalism simulation, which takes me to the the uh, next slide, uh, we've partnered with, the, with Conscious Capitalism, Inc. Uh, Conscious Capitalism is a, a more enlightened view of business. The idea is to not only uh, seek profits, but also to take care of all the, shareholders, all the stakeholders that uh, a company um, uh, must work with and, and is in the community, employees, uh, customers, uh, uh, stockholders, uh, the environment. And uh, uh, I have here a picture of a training program we did at Monterey Tech in Mexico. The person circled in the center is uh, Ra Sosodia, who is the spiritual leader for conscious capitalism. And uh, I was down there um, to uh, write, and Bindu Agawa uh, was also there. Uh, she's also going to participate in today's program. Um, but we trained all of their faculty in uh, conscious capitalism. Uh, and this is an absolutely wonderful partnership. And we have a conscious capitalism simulation of that's of interest to you. Now, here's the agenda. Uh, we'll start off with what our challenges are uh, and give you a short video to get for an overview of Marketplace, talk about uh, uh, ADA compliance, uh, review the game scenario. Um, then we're gonna do a live hands-on um, team meeting uh, with uh, some of our colleagues. And then we'll show you a little bit about uh, the instructor software and what uh, you can see there. Um, we'll kind of begin to wrap it up with what is the secret recipe of Marketplace? Why does it work so well? and then uh, identify a number of simulations that we have available, and perhaps you can find one that will fit your needs. And finally, we'd like to invite you to schedule a personal tour for a much more in-depth look. So in terms of our challenges, I like this little vignette. Uh, welcome aboard flight 271 flying nonstop from New York to Paris. My name is Dominique. I'm presently training to become a commercial pilot. I've never flown an aircraft before, but I studied the documentation for this aircraft. This flight will provide me with the much needed experience I require for certification. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Now you wouldn't want to hear this over the loudspeaker, um, but in many ways we send our students out into the business world and they have a, a lot of documentation knowledge, but they don't have a lot of experience. So simulations are a way of doing that, um, just like Flight simulators provide uh, pilots like Dominique with a tremendous amount of experience before they step into an airplane. And uh, we do that with Marketplace. This leads us to the, the old Chinese proverb that is, I listen, I forget, I see, I remember, I do, I understand. And you will forget 90% of what I tell you today, uh, just like your students will forget 90% of what you tell them. Uh, if they can see how things are done, they're much more inclined to remember. But if they can actually do it, they will have much higher level of understanding and actually uh, achieve skill level. And 
what is learning? Learning is, we learn the best by doing. Uh, I love this picture of the baby who is learning about the, uh, 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 the trigger mechanism on a hose. Um, they uh, starting off very early, actually starting off immediately as uh, after we're born, we are trying to learn and trying to learn from the environment. And we, as children, we try many things and not everything works, but the beauty of a child is the child just keeps on trying. And just the same thing is true in, in education. Um, there's what's called the, the theory of experiential learning. Uh, and that is, is that we learn by doing. Uh, we try using our best knowledge, things that we've been taught, and, uh, and we try to put it to work. Uh, like in the marketplace simulation, we, we, we do the best we can with what we know. But as I, as I tell my students, you have never started up a business before. You've never done advertising, design brands, um, and certainly not in the industry that I'm going to put you in. And so um, you can expect to make mistakes. And, and uh, it's not because of your lack of trying, but it's a lack of experience and a lack of practice. But through this process of, of taking your knowledge and applying it, seeing how it does, reflecting on that, uh, those outcomes, and, and uh, we will improve our knowledge. And then we go back out into the world and try again. And you do the same thing with a simulation. You go to another round and take your newfound knowledge and apply it. And you will still make mistakes, but not as many. There'll be new situations where you'll have to make new mistakes, but in the process, iteratively, you keep improving and that's how you learn and you develop skills in the process. I'd like to give you a short video uh, that gives you an overview of, of Marketplace. Welcome to Marketplace Simulations. We provide business simulations for undergraduate and graduate college courses. Simulations are digital game-like exercises that give your students the opportunity to learn by doing. Concepts come to life when students make business decisions for themselves and compete against each other in the safety of a virtual environment. Marketplace has been a leader in higher education simulation learning for more than 30 years, currently used in over 600 schools worldwide. In our simulations, students will start up a company breaking into a new market. They'll develop a business strategy, analyze market data, launch products, grow and manage a global business empire. Students test ideas and learn from the results, maximizing the bottom line. Our instructor dashboard is full of tools and resources to support you and your classroom. Set up a new simulation in just a few clicks. Easily assess student performance and monitor decisions real time. Automated grading and world-class support mean you spend more time focusing on your students. With over 30 simulations ranging from marketing to entrepreneurship to strategy and from core to capstone, we have the right one for your course. If you're looking to introduce a business simulation to your classroom, just visit us at marketplacesimulations.com. So that gives you a, a, um, uh, a nice compact overview of what Marketplace does. Um, I'd like to take you a little bit deeper into uh, what Marketplace offers. Uh, the next thing is the uh, ADA compliance, that's the American Disabilities Act. And I'm sure that no matter where you are, uh, you have a similar kind of uh, legal requirement. Uh, our goal is that all students can easily, equally, and independently engage with our simulations. We spent more than a year to make sure that this is a true statement. On the left, you'll see the different kinds of, of uh, limitations that people have, whether it be visual, motor, auditory, or cognitive. Um, there, there are really very specific guidelines that are available that, that uh, define how you must present information, and, uh, enable people to make decisions and interact uh, with whatever you have. And, uh, and we've spent a lot of time uh, crafting marketplace to satisfy these. 
Here's just one example. Um, uh, in one of our games, there are 12 uh, markets in which the players can open up a test market store. And uh, uh, for the sighted, you can see where they are and understand their, their position relative to each other. But if you have limited eyesight, uh, we provide a description that a screen reader can read and uh, will communicate the essential information in that graph. And so we do these kinds of things throughout uh, the uh, software. <clears throat> I'd like to give you uh, a game scenario, what the game scenario is. We have a new um, uh, marketplace simulation, which is based on um, uh, 3D printed uh, carbon fiber bicycles. So in this particular scenario, this is for an intro to marketing simulation. We, we have variations on it for full enterprise simulations, international simulations and so forth. But the one which we will show you is for an, an intro to marketing uh, class. So you work for a large international bicycle firm. Um, corporate headquarters wants uh, to enter the 3D printed carbon fiber bicycle business. And uh, this is a new segment of the bike business. It's actually carbon fiber bikes have been around for a long time. Uh, not, a, not a long time, but for um, a good number of years. But these bicycles are, are really very expensive. Today, if you want a, a pretty decent uh, carbon fiber bike, you're, you're going to spend ten to $15,000. I mean, that's a lot of money. But there has been new technology just recently developed. And, and the reason I, I actually created this simulation is that uh, we are adjacent to the Oak Ridge National Lab, which does research uh, and state-of-the-art work with regards to 3D printing or what is also called additive printing uh, and carbon fiber. There is an, um, a manufacturing demonstration facility, which is as large as a, a very large super uh, supermarket filled with 3D printers. And I've had the opportunity to visit, see how they work. I've worked with uh, people who, who do 3D printing. By the same token, they are also specialists in material science. And one of the things they have created is a very inexpensive carbon fiber. It's uh, the same kind of material that goes into our socks. And, um, and they can use that to create carbon fiber. So these two innovations are, are setting the stage for, for the uh, ability to create 3D printed carbon fibers. We're not quite there, but we're near there. And so I created this uh, simulation with that in mind. And this is the scenario that we've built. So in this um, particular game, you're going to head up a new marketing division to test market this business idea. Uh, and you'll be selling these 3D printed carbon fiber bikes to consumers in uh, company owned stores. There will also be other competitors that will be doing the same thing at, at the same time. Uh, they could be uh, your classmates or they could be computer generated competitors. Uh, the market uh, characteristics are there are three market segments. There is the recreation segment. These are people who like to ride the bike you know, uh, easy ride uh, on bike paths uh, in the country, uh, through the neighborhood, and uh, they're looking for uh, ease of use, comfort, safety. Um, they're out to have a good time with family and friends, and uh, they're willing to pay uh, for a carbon fiber bike a bit more than what they would pay for a metal bike, uh, but they're still price conscious. There's another segment which is willing to pay more and they're looking for a very rugged bike and that's the mountain segment. These are people that go off road. They like to work hard and pedal up um, the mountains. Uh, it doesn't bother them to hit roots and stones and, and uh, dodge trees and so forth. In fact, that's the fun of it. And they love to come down and, and uh, face that challenge. And they'll pay a little bit extra to have a rugged bike. Then you have the speed segment, which as the name suggests, is for people who like to ride fast. They ride on the roadways. They're looking for a very light aerodynamic bicycle and they'll pay for, for those uh, capabilities. 
So these are the segments that you would have to deal with, and you, you would pick uh, uh, one and then another to uh, pursue to develop your business. Now, there are uh, four test stores that have been identified, test locations, and what you'll be doing is uh, rolling out uh, your products uh, to all four of these test stores over time, but you have to pick one uh, to get started, just like you pick one segment to get started. Now, what's really great about um, having 3D printed bicycles is that you can have a different kind of store. If you take the store on the left, this is a friend of mine, Kelly, he, um, he has to have a bike, uh, a good, better, and best bike uh, for everybody. He has to have a male and a female uh, version, and he has to have bikes for um, uh, children, uh, recreation segment, mountain segment, speed segment, people are commuting. It's not hard to have 100 bikes in a store. Now with 3D printing, what's really nice is you have a showroom as opposed to every bike that you could possibly want to sell. And so in this space here is a showroom where your models are placed. And over here you have a fitting space where uh, you're measured uh, as to your size uh, and, uh, uh, and based on your physical characteristics, uh, a uh, frame will be designed just for you and also based on your skill level because if you're a mountain biker you're a different person than if you're a recreational biker. So um, this creates a different kind of a store uh, than the classic one. There are a lot of really great advantages to 3D printed carbon fiber bikes. Uh, one is they're lighter than a metal bike therefore it's a lot easier to pedal they're more comfortable. One of the advantages is that the carbon fiber absorbs vibrations that come through the handlebars and the seat and so forth. All right. Um, and uh, uh, so uh, it's more comfortable. There's also less fatigue and more comfort uh, because the frame is built for you and just you alone uh, based on your um, physical requirements and skill needs. Uh, you'll find that because you're using less energy, you're not, uh, you're, you don't feel all that vibration, you'll be more energized and, uh, and you'll enjoy the ride more. And the price is much more affordable because instead of spending 10 to 15,000, you're spending eight, 900, 1,000, 1,500. Still a bit pricey, but uh, you get to ride a really cool carbon fiber bike. If you've ever seen one, you ever picked one up, I mean, it is exciting. So um, that, those are the customer advantages, but there are also some tremendous business advantages, which helps to uh, uh, be able to offer these prices at a very economical price. One is that the production is streamlined. You, you know, you're only gonna be producing bikes to order. So if somebody goes into the store and gets measured and orders any of those bikes, that, is, that uh, those specifications are wired to the, are sent to the uh, production facility where that bike is made to order and then shipped to the store for delivery to the uh, consumer. Uh, as a consequence, there's no inventory. So you don't have warehouses. You don't have warehouses full of inventory. You don't have stores filled with inventory. Um, and uh, so all those costs go away. As a result of that, debt and equity is not nearly so great. Um, you don't have your money tied up in all these assets. And the bicycle shop is smaller and more pleasant, uh, less expensive, all right? One really great part of this is, is that you're more likely to make a sale in, under this uh, um, business model. Because if you remember Kelly's bike shop, you go in there and you, find the right, you want a recreation bike, comes in a couple of different sizes and uh, male or female, but you may not find the right bike for you either because of uh, the size differences from what they specified versus what you need, you know, or the uh, colors or seat and all these things are different. So you end up going to two or three stores to find the right bike. But with the 3D, 
uh, printed bikes, um, they, uh, it's all for you and you pick it up in a few days. And so you're more likely to make a sale. Now, they, all the games have a particular uh, chronology, uh, whether it's an intro to marketing, intro to business, uh, supply chain, uh, strategy, conscious capitalism. There are like four stages. There's a startup phase where the students uh, learn the business, develop an initial strategy and go to test market. And as I said earlier, you know, none of these students have started up a bicycle company, uh, opened a store, designed bikes. And so it's important to learn the business and start slowly and try out your ideas. And uh, so every game has a couple of quarters, business quarters of test marketing. And you go through this iterative process of learning how to be successful in this market. Then I like to have a transition phase where uh, you, you give the students a chance to pause and reflect on what they've learned. Uh, they get some additional capital, either from corporate headquarters or venture capitalists that they can invest in new R&D, uh, new sales outlets. But the important part is for them to reflect on what they've learned and you can have them prepare a marketing plan or a business plan. It could be something formal with a presentation or something as short as a memo or a reflection. Then the idea is, is after having reflected, they can go into the growth phase and implement uh, their plan and uh, expand their business. And one of the things they'll discover is that the market still continues to change. Uh, competitors are coming up with their own ideas and uh, there's still more learning and skillful adjustment required. At the end of the exercise, we typically have some kind of final accountability. Uh, the students are ranked using a balanced scorecard. Uh, we look at how they did in the last four quarters of their play. And uh, they have to uh, monitor their performance and work to improve themselves on uh, their financials, um, market shares and their targeted segments, customer satisfaction, creational wealth, um, uh, human resources, whatever the, the, uh, the game uh, includes. Uh, so they're ranked uh, among those in their class as well as anybody who's ever played that game before. Uh, there's also an opportunity here for another reflection uh, on how things went. And um, I, this could be a formal presentation, uh, a short report or a memo, uh, but it's usually a good idea to to get them to think about what they experienced. All right, so now we're gonna try something that's risky. We're gonna go online with the team playing Marketplace. Um, so I have recruited some good friends who are going to uh, show you how you can uh, do this all online. We have Mary Hannah here in Knoxville. Uh, we have Paul Choi in South Korea and Bindu Agawal in India, and Reno Senior in Dominican Republic. And so I have asked them to take over a company and uh, work their way through the first quarter. And so I'm gonna uh, stop sharing and give this over to Mary Hannah, who's gonna take over. Alrighty, we are now in our marketplace simulation game. Thank you for taking the time to meet with me today and elected me as the team president. Today, we need to make our final decisions on our company name, target segment, and store locations. To recap, Paul is in charge of research and strategy. Bindu is in charge of our marketing. And lastly, Reno is our sales. So Bindu, I know you were starting to come up with some name ideas, but I think it would be a good idea if we first hear from Paul on his target target segment findings and where he recommends us entering the market. So Paul, would you like to tell us your findings? Sure. Uh, I was just checking out potential demand of each different segment, also every different cities in all over the world. Definitely like at first we need to start from uh, like a approachable market. So I would like to suggest you um, recreational market since it's, uh, it's, it's a very affordable price we can provide. At the same time, there are a bunch of market chance, especially um, 
uh, arms teradam. So, and I checked out their willing to price, a uh, pr price willing to pay is just um, a recreation for their willing to pay is, is 900. And, and also the market size, possible market size is pretty big. So I'm just uh, recommend you to, and, and then you just take that all those, uh, their uh, customer needs and wants, you can easily check out as, as much cost compatible. So I'll do re definitely recommend uh, recreation as a, a first segment. After that, we can move on our uh, next strategy, uh, like expand to mountain. That's my suggestion as a um, in charge of marketing research. Okay, thank you, Paul. That was some really great information. Bindu, what do you think on Paul's yeah, findings? Yeah, as for the market selection done by Paul, and uh, because uh, in the future we would be moving to all the segments, recreation, mountain, and speed. And as we know that this is a new business opportunity and a high tech business. So uh, uh, my suggestion is to name our company, which is very highly personalized kind of bike we are offering. So probably my bike, so that people can relate it to their own customized kind of thing. First choice is my bike. Second choice is Futuro Tech Bikes, so that we can uh, tell the customers, okay, you are going to be the uh, part of the future technology, and they would be having pride in selecting our, or uh, adapting our uh, carbo fiber bikes. And my third choice would be the Trendy Bikes. And because we are, uh, venturing into the new uh, technology and new trends would be our USB. So these three names. And I would like to have a discussion with the team if uh, they would like to select any one of these names. I mean, I, I think future tech sounds great. Um, I would like to hear from everyone else though as well to hear what they think. While we're discussing this, I'm gonna go ahead and put in our decision, because do we all agree on the recreation as our first priority for segment? I think, I think recreation, it's probably the, uh, the safest entry point, uh, but definitely according to the evolution of what we can see ahead, uh, we might as well be able to move to the, the other segments as well. I agree. And, and we said mountain would be our second priority, correct? Yes. Yes. Oh, we got an error message. It looks like we are not quite able to decide on our second priority. So we will just mm -hmm. keep recreation as our first priority. And we'll decide once we have more data on our other segments. Bindu, I'm gonna come back to your name ideas. Um, like I said, I really like the future bike ideas, but I would like to hear from everyone else on their ideas or on their opinion. I like future bike as well. All right. Okay. Future, future, bikes future tech, was, was, that, was that future tech bikes? Future tech bikes. Future tech bikes. Future tech yeah. bikes. I like that one. Thank you, Bindu. That was a great idea. That's great. All righty. Now we're going to come down and look at where we can enter the market at. I know Reno had been working on this. So let's hear from Reno about his market findings. Well, I was looking at the, uh, the, the, the forecast of the different, the four different six cities that we have available to, uh, to test this, uh, this, this entry of market, uh, exploring the, the, uh, the total potential market of the three different segments, we might be able to enter, as I was saying, recreation at, at, at first, but eventually we can move on to the other. So what I was doing is, is making an exercise on comparing the uh, the cost of the sales offices to establish there and i found out that for example amsterdam and new york city 
uh, they may run about a, a, a total of 16,000, around 16,000 units, each of these two markets, but the cost of the office uh, runs between 50 and $70,000. Uh, now, whether you look at the, or the minor or the more uh, uh, less expensive markets like Bangalore or Rio de Janeiro, and even though the, uh, the, 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 the forecast may drop uh, around 30%, the cost of the office could be a, a quarter of that. So my probably for entering the market and uh, for a test purpose will, will probably be Bangalore, uh, which is the uh, very inexpensive office and, and yet the volumes that we can seize there will probably be 30% less than in Amsterdam or New York City. Thank you. Bindu or Paul, do you have any um, thing you would like to add to Rena's findings? Do you think, uh, think Bangalore is a good first place? Yeah, I think he's good. Good choice. Thanks, Bindu. All righty, our first location is going to be in Bangalore. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, um, yeah, possible, I think. Hmm. I brought back up the data so you can look at it again. Paul, did you have another city in mind? Um, uh, I mean, I, I personally, uh, based on the possible, uh, possible uh, number of uh, buying bikes in Bangalore it looks great at uh, uh, let me see I'm, I'm just checking things out um, that's perfectly okay. fine we got to make sure we enter in the proper location yeah you will you will discover that maybe yes. probably higher uh, higher prospect markets but the cost of entering there it will be uh, more expensive as well. So for a for a for a buyout period, it will probably be safer and lower risk to enter Bangalore or or yeah, than, than New York City or Amsterdam. But we could yeah. see if we we're willing to, of, I mean, to go there. Are a, yeah. In terms of risk, I mean, I totally agree. Uh, I just to, uh, I, I also want to avoid the risk at first. I mean, but as time goes by. Let's move on. Let's taking some more risk as time goes by is possible. So, yeah, I agree. No. Okay. We'll make sure maybe next time we can go into Amsterdam right. or possibly New York City as well. I went sure. ahead and selected Bangalore as our first location to enter the market on. I'm going to make sure all of our decisions are in here properly. If y'all notice anything that doesn't look correct, let me know but it is looking good to me. I'm gonna make sure we don't have any issues. It looks like we are in the clear. We don't have any errors. So I am going to submit our results. Good. Yeah, we seems we gotta go. Good. All right, yes. thank you team for helping me make Excellent. these decisions. That's great. I'm gonna hand it back over to Ernie and he will wrap great. up. Very good, that is a excellent work. Uh, by the team. It's nice to be the uh, fly on the wall and see how things are done. Um, so what we just illustrated is that a team can work together from anywhere. I mean, from literally, as you saw, all over the world. And, and they're all connected uh, through, um, through marketplace. And we can all see exactly the same things that Mary Hannah is, is showing. Um, What's nice is that then you as an instructor can also connect with your students uh, and uh, um, uh, you can have uh, briefings. We call them executive briefings or you can have one-on-one -on -one meetings, uh, however you wish to do it and, uh, and, and have a good dialogue uh, with your, um, um, uh, your students as they are participating in the competition. I'd like to show you a, a little bit more and just take a couple of minutes to uh, 
I'd like to show you the instructor uh, software, how you design brands and the, the viewpoint from the instructor. Uh, I can even just show you really quickly. I can create a new game, all right? And I can give it, uh, uh, this is under Gary's um, profile, but I can call it a, uh, let's just call it a, a test uh, game and I can choose the level of, of my curriculum. Now this, I will say it's a, uh, we're gonna do a, a, a test game, all right? And, uh, and I explain why, and that is to uh, get experience. All right, and that's a signal to uh, our support team that we're here to help you and not charge you for that. This will be in English. And uh, I can choose any of these games if I choose uh, intro to marketing. All right, and then uh, uh, we'll have them play against uh, uh, classmates. All right, and I can choose chapters. Uh, I can add micro simulations. I'm gonna leave that for the moment. Uh, it will ask me how many students, let's say because this is a test game, I'm gonna do it with just eight people. Um, and we're gonna set up uh, four teams, or no, excuse me, number of licenses I need. Uh, number of students per team, okay, two. And I'm gonna set up four teams and I need eight licenses. And then I set my schedule. Uh, so I'll set it to start tomorrow and we will do this every week, once a week. And uh, this is a summary of what I just did. I submit and I get my game ID and this will also be uh, sent to me. So um, I hadn't really intended to do that, but that is a good example of how you create a game. Um, now in front of me, I'm gonna take this opportunity uh, to show you a few more things. So uh, we have Prime Bikes and Future Carbon Tech. I can click on Future Carbon Tech and I can see exactly the same thing that they see. I'm gonna just blow this up so it's a little bit easier. And uh, so all four of those, uh, uh, participants are looking at the same thing I'm looking at. And um, so I can walk through it with them. I can see what they're experiencing. So some of the cool things here, uh, we do, we set up these games so that we always put information in front of a decision. So knowing customer needs is really important. And so if I wanted to create a recreation bike, I go to customer needs and wants, I click on the icon up here and it, it tells me easy to ride, comfortable, I wanna feel young at heart, safety, simple to use, low price point. So using that information, I can go in here and design a new brand. So, um, so I'm gonna call this the, uh, the future comfort, okay? Uh, that's the name of my brand. And I'm gonna choose the comfort bike frame uh, and so you can see it. Now, if I had chosen a rugged bike frame, you'll see that it has a different shape, aerodynamic bike frame. Uh, and you might have noticed things are changing here. These are the features that would be appropriate for the different uh, bike frames. And so you'll see that um, on my tires, I could have mountain tires or hybrid or racing tires. As I move my cursor across that, you'll see a, a description to the left and the shape of the tire. If you look at the bike, you'll see that the wheels are highlighted and as I shift to different tires, uh, they appear there. Same thing with brakes. Uh, if I have a, a standard disc brake, okay, handlebars uh, and uh, gear speeds. So I can design a bike uh, for the segment that I'm targeting, all right? And I have pricing decisions and advertising decisions and I hire salespeople. So these are the things which, which I can do. Um, and as a student and also as an instructor, I can watch. So that gives you a feeling for the instructor and student experience. So what is the, uh, the secret recipe here for um, 
marketplace. Um, I will take you there. I think that um, there's two things that instructors look for. Um, one is to not have a lot of work, a little or no work. And the second thing is to be a hero. Um, so as far as being the hero, the, the way to do that is to give the students something they love, all right? Something they enjoy, uh, something they get excited about when they see you and they want to talk to you about it. Um, and something that they will work on uh, outside of class time and will be thinking about when they're eating, taking a shower with friends. Uh, you want something that's fun, realistic, relevant, and highly spirited. Uh, that's, that's really great. When you can give them that, you become the hero. And the other thing is, is um, to not do a lot of work. And just to emphasize that, uh, we've thought through the entire pedagogy. Um, uh, we have an assortment of simulations for you. We have a number of options with any of those simulations. We have micro simulations, we have um, quizzes, uh, we have assessments. Uh, you can choose what you want. Uh, when you are serving your role as the coach, we put a lot of tools at your fingertips. Um, uh, you can set up a game in a matter of clicks. You choose the level of difficulty, uh, tell us the number of students and um, uh, how many teams you're going to have, what extra features you want. And you can do this in a matter of three or four minutes um, and you're all set up. When you are playing the game, uh, you have a coaching assistant, which will identify uh, the areas of concern with any team and uh, give you some guidance on, on how to work with that team. We have various strategic highlights that will show you all the decisions that each team is making uh, side by side. And we have automated grading. And the uh, automated grading based on that balanced scorecard will rank the students uh, from high to low and assign a grade from, uh, from the highest. Uh, we use A's down to D's. Um, for an F, you would ask to be something really remarkable. Most of the students really do quite well, put in a lot of time. And uh, so we're looking at grades that tend to be pretty good because of the amount of effort that they will put into it. Uh, we also keep students in a safe space during the startup phase and test marketing. You saw Mary Hannah show you an error message about not choosing a, a second segment. And so we, we do that uh, until they get to the point of uh, transition where they have extra money and then we let them go. Uh, the secret recipe of all this is the realism. I, I hope you could see a little bit of it and I'll come back to it. Um, it's a very ri visually rich and enlightening workspace. Uh, the things that students do are highly relevant uh, to what marketing people and business people do. Um, the rivalry is what gets the competitive juices flowing and causes people to get highly involved. And it's a game. It's fun to see how you're going to do, uh, to anticipate that, to worry about your competition, to have a certain amount of anguish and uh, exhilaration. These are all parts of the experience of playing a game. All right, now choosing the right simulation. Um, we have literally a, a simulation for you no matter where you are coming from. There, we have intro to business simulations for core classes um, and uh, whether it be uh, business fundamentals or intro to business and strategy, uh, accounting the same, marketing, intro courses. Then we, as you get into higher level classes, uh, at the undergraduate level, we have strategic marketing, advanced strategic marketing, which is also good at the MBA level. Um, in strategy and business policy, we have a simulation that focuses on strategy. Uh, this conscious capitalism simulation is great. Uh, it actually fits in a lot of different places. Um, but uh, you have all the normal uh, business challenges plus the issues of dealing with and taking concern for many stakeholders. 
And even an intro to business and strategy simulation fits here if you're looking for something light and not take up too much time within the course. We have a good number of channel uh, and supply chain simulations with varying difficulties. Uh, in entrepreneurship, it's a big area for us. Uh, we have a new venture strategy that conscious capitalism also plays in. Uh, we have operations management simulation. At the graduate level, I can recommend the conscious capitalism again. It is a sophisticated uh, simulation and you want it for more uh, experienced students. And we also have international corporate management. So you can pick the simulation that you would like. Um, we want to invite you to schedule a personal tour. There's a lot more to this than what we've been able to show you. Uh, but one thing which we would like you to come away with is that you can do this. Um, Marketplace is the expert in online delivery. We've been doing it for 20 years. Uh, we're safe, we're highly reliable. Uh, our content is relevant to what the students want to learn, what you want to teach them. Uh, if you take what we have, and, and for the most part, people have been doing this in face to face, but you can go online. There's great tools out there today for with video conferencing, video chat, and even uh, connecting by phone. I was talking with uh, Bharat Dhamani, who's in Pune, India, just yesterday, and he conducted his class because of bandwidth. They couldn't do video uh, connections, but they could connect by phone. But with everybody uh, having the same uh, information in front of them, they're all logged into the same software. They could, just as you listen to Reno, kind of direct Mary Hannah where to look, um, uh, you can do the same thing uh, because everybody has the same information. And, uh, and so you can do this even by phone um, and, and use WhatsApp or whatever. The thing that's, re that's really helpful at this time is that students are familiar with many of these tools. They already use them all the time. You probably see them in your classroom uh, and you probably do the same thing. So what we want to do is encourage you to contact support, and learn some more and uh, choose the, the right simulation. Um, if you'd like, we can set up a trial run for you. Um, Rashkumar Fatate, he, he wants to get some of his fellow teachers in practice just the same way that you saw uh, our team do it. And so we would encourage you to, to do the same. Um, and what we would like you to remember about Marketplace, uh, it is a fun way to learn business. Everyone can play, there are no limitations. Uh, we have a Marketplace simulation for you, whatever your level, whatever your uh, discipline, and we can help you be a hero, all right? your students will love this experience. And I'd like to thank everybody for participating. Um, you know, the, to kind of wrap it up, uh, what we work towards is engaging your students, challenging them, inspiring them, and helping you to transform them. All right, that's our goal. I think that's your goal. And Marketplace Simulations is there to work with you to achieve uh, actually these goals.